Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve the problem, check if object instance of a class. We're given a function that takes two parameters and we want to implement that function. And it's going to take one parameter as some object or maybe primitive value and a second parameter, which is a class function, which in this case, like date is a class function. And in JavaScript, class functions are usually functions like this. So for example, if I wanted to create a class function person like this, and it takes in a name, then it's a class function. If I use the this keyword to declare some variable like this. Now, if I want to call person, it's not going to work just by calling it like this. I have to call it with the new keyword. That's what makes this a class function. And of course, if I pass in a name, then this will basically work just like a constructor in most languages, and it will instantiate some object for us. Now, why is that important? Because we're kind of checking types in this case. So taking a look at this example over here, if we're given a date object that we just constructed and we want to know if it's an instance of the date class, essentially, the answer, of course, is going to be true. Now, how exactly can we determine that? Well, we're going to need to use some built in JavaScript methods and functions that you probably haven't used before because they don't really come up super often. Now, it might not be so straightforward. Suppose this example over here, which I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste onto the right over here. So in this case, we are creating a animal class and creating a dog class, which extends from the animal class. And then we're checking is a dog an instance of the animal class? Well, not directly, but via inheritance, it is because dog, of course, inherits from animal. And this is, of course, using class syntax in JavaScript. There's a lot of different ways to rewrite the same code. That's what I hate about JavaScript. But in this case, the answer would also be true. So that's something we're going to have to implement as well. Now you might be thinking, how are we going to handle primitives? Primitives actually do have a prototype chain. And that's kind of what we're doing here because in JavaScript, there isn't the typical inheritance that you might be used to in like Java or C++, which I'm also used to. JavaScript has a more lightweight implementation called prototype inheritance. And in our case, numbers are a part of the prototype chain. And in our case, numbers have a prototype as well. And that's kind of obvious because when you use like strings and numbers, you can call methods on them. Like for A here, I can create a string and then I can print the length of that string. And this length field isn't just coming from nowhere, it's coming from the prototype chain, the string prototype. There are some differences though between creating a string like this and creating a string like this. And I'll talk about that in just a second after our first solution. But I think that's enough for us now to get into this solution. And we are going to need a few built in methods. So first of all, maybe we can just check that the object is invalid, like it's a falsy value. And if that's the case, it probably doesn't have any type of prototype chain and then we can just return false. Well, not quite because like we just talked about, we could be given a zero value. We could be given an empty string and I believe those are also falsy, but we wouldn't want to return false in that case because it's possible that they do have the matching class. So let's be a bit more explicit and let's check if the object is not or is equal to null or the other one is the object is equal to undefined. And in that case, we return false. And there is another edge case, which I think is kind of dumb. The class function itself could also be a falsy value. It could also be undefined. It could be null. But in our case, we definitely want it to always be a class function. So at the very least, let's check that the type of the class function is at least a function. And I think we actually never talked about this type of we talked about all the primitives we talked about objects but actually functions have a type as well which makes sense because it definitely should be distinct from an object so like this down here when we created this function its type would be function now how do we actually check the prototype of an object because we want to make sure that the prototype of this object matches this one well we can get the prototype like this object dot get prototype of this given object. So if I called this on a string, it would return the prototype string. If I called it on number, it would return the prototype number. And at this point, you might think that we can just do a very simple comparison. Current prototype is equal to the class function dot prototype. Now, 
First of all, why are we uh, just using the dot prototype attribute here, whereas we had to call this function on the object? Well, typically the prototype field is hidden on the object. If we try to do dot prototype, we would probably get an error because that field is hidden. So we can't just usually do it like that. It's not that simple because we're in JavaScript land. But why can we call dot prototype on the class function? Well, well, that's the class itself and it should have access to its own prototype. And don't worry, I'll kind of do a quick demo towards the end to actually prove to you that that's what's going on. But if this is true, if this equality is true, then we should probably just return true. But if it's not true, then should we return false? Well, remember that last example down here, we know that their prototype of a dog is going to be dog. It's not going to be animal. So how do we go down that prototype chain or go up the inheritance chain? Well, we can do that with a loop. So eventually the base case is going to be that the current prototype is going to be equal to null. So while it's not equal to null, we're basically going to be doing this operation. And I'm going to go ahead and move that. And I might as well just copy and paste this inside of the loop as well. I guess we're redeclaring a variable every time, but oh well. Actually, now that I think of it, we probably should move it on the outside because uh, we don't wanna call the prototype method on object every single time. But if this doesn't execute, then let's uh, do the same exact operation down here, except instead of calling that on the object, we're gonna call it on the current prototype. And eventually we'll either return true or out here, we're gonna return false. And I also realized up here we had a slight bug. We want to check, we only want to return false if that's not a function. So sorry about that. And there goes our syntax highlighting. But that is, believe it or not, the entire code. I'm personally not satisfied though. I don't feel like I entirely understand what's going on here. So I am going to go deeper into the explanation. But first, let's run this code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. But now back to the drawing board. Now for that thing I was talking about at the end, we have the date class. And if we try to print the prototype of that, it's going to work. But if we have a date object, the prototype is going to be hidden from it. So if we try this right now, you can see, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what's going on. But then if we ch uh, sort of change this part to actually say object dot get prototype of this instance, and then we print it. Well, now it works because again, that's hidden from objects. Now, this itself is a little bit misleading. This kind of just makes it look like an empty object. That's because we're doing this in Node.js. But now if I take this same code and let's just take this first line and I run it inside of my browser in the console tab here, we can see printing that we get some big object and that object is the prototype. And you can see it has all the methods we'd expect from the date class. It has get day, get hours, all that stuff. It has a constructor. So that's what we're doing here. And now if I make a class, suppose, and I call it date subclass, and I say it extends from the date class, and then I try to construct an instance of this. So if I say date, well, it says data, sorry about that, subclass, and then I create an instance of this, I'll call it D2. And now if I try to actually print the prototype chain of D2 and I, I do it with like the appropriate object get prototype and I pass in D2 over here, let's see what happens. Let's run the code and you can see we get their prototype date subclass. But if I call now on this, I call get prototype of again on the outside of that, what are we gonna get? Well, let's make it a little bit more clear. I'm going to uh, get rid of this and I'm gonna say here D2 proto for short. And then on the date subclass, I'm gonna call grit, uh, get prototype on that. So get prototype on D2 proto, closing parentheses and then running that then we get date. We had to call it twice. That's us going up the prototype chain. Now, if I call it one more time, let's see what happens. I'm running out of names and I've always been bad at naming things. So I'm just calling that D2 proto proto. And now I'm going to call get prototype on that. Okay. My brain isn't working today. Let's get prototype of, okay, let's rerun that. And now you see we get pretty much empty. So at that point we would pretty much terminate so that's most of what I wanted to show you. And lastly, I think it's definitely worth mentioning that what we pretty much implemented here today was the instance of operation, except we kind of implemented it actually better 
than how it's implemented in JavaScript because look, n1 is instance of a number. What this is going to do is not what you might expect, actually. It's going to give us false. But if I create a new number, n2, and I create it with the number constructor, and then I call instance of on that, we do end up getting true because even though this number does have access to all the methods from the number class because it does go up their prototype chain, it's not technically an instance of number because it wasn't created with a number constructor. And that's just because JavaScript is weird. It allows us to use the methods even though it's technically not an instance of this. And that's even more obvious when you do it with a string. So I'm gonna quickly copy and paste a bit of code. Here you can see a string declared with some uh, quotes and then a string with a constructor. And this will also do the same thing. We get false with this one and true with this one. Even though this string, we can still log the length of it. I can I can still say log s1.length and I can call a bunch of methods on it. I can trim it. I can get the slice maybe of it or a substring. And that's because of course, just because you declare a string like this doesn't mean you don't want access to all that functionality. But when it comes to actually checking if it's an instance of it, technically JavaScript tells us no, it's not. But still for both of these primitives, if we get the prototype chain of both of them like this, we do get the same thing. They're both from the string prototype. And that's why we used this to solve this problem. We used get prototype of instead of using instance of because this doesn't completely solve the problem for us. And very quickly, just to prove it to you, I'm going to run in the console tab console.log object.get prototype of some empty string like that. And when you run it, you can see we do get the prototype chain of string and all the methods like character at, font size, link, all that stuff. So if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.